What's up, y'all? Guys, we're getting started on today's workshop. Uh, we call these internally, we call these impact calls in our, in our new EPIC program. Uh, we're going to be calling it the workshop today. But as you guys are popping in here, uh, go in the comments box, probably in the bottom right of the screen, and uh, just pop pop in your name, where you're calling in from. And and also, what I, what I want you to do is also mention why are you coming on to this session today, right? Why are you carving out the time? Uh, to come on this session today, I'm going to share my screen and kind of walk through what we are going to be talking about uh, from burnout to breakthrough, how to really get unstuck, buy back your time, regain freedom, and really ignite momentum and profits in your business either again or for the next phase of the business as you're looking to grow. But we're going to be talking about some mindset, uh, some strategy, and three specific executable tactics. So uh, let me know, y'all. Do a quick tech check. A double yes if you can hear me, see me in the comments box. And then also let me know where you're calling in from and uh, why are you popping on this call? And uh, we're, we're going to be we're going to be digging in. And these sessions are always some of my favorites because we we teach marketing most of the time here at Carrot, right? We have our evergreen marketing workshops. We have our uh, SEO and PPC articles and resources and, and everything. But what we rarely do, and we're starting to do a lot more now, except for on our carrot cast, is talk about the mindset side of things. Is really talk about not just mindset, but what is the exact model that we need to be building our businesses on so our businesses don't trap us, right? So our businesses actually support us rather than us supporting our businesses. Uh, what's up, Ali from uh, Calgary, Canada? I love it. And that's what this can be about. So uh, pop in, guys, who you are, where you calling in from, and what are you hoping to get out of this session today? So I want to respect all y'all's time. And um, where where this session came from is actually, this is a, I'm going to show you some pictures of an event that we do here in our offices, in, in our offices in, in Little Roseburg, Oregon, uh, called Carrot Camp. And we've been doing Carrot Camps for probably, shoot, I think probably six years or so. Uh, we've had you know several hundred campers come through. We do them in small groups of fifteen, and and it's it's been an amazing experience. Transformations always come out of carrot camps, and one of the things that's been the most consistent themes is people leave carrot camp with amazing community, with these mental mindset shifts. They get to see it behind the scenes in our business and behind the scenes of of other successful businesses, and they leave with that motivation, resources, and community. But then they don't have anything else to tap into. So they kept on saying, Trevor, how, how, how can we tap into something all year long so we can not just get this motivation and momentum continuing, but we can just really, really uh, have a group of people around us that we're growing uh, together on this. So this webinar has actually came out of that request. How can we better get the right type of guidance in front of our customers, including this, my assistant, Jen, that I'm showing right here. She did a presentation at our last Carrot Camp showing people how to work with and leverage an executive assistant to buy back that time. So we're going to talk about some of those things, but this whole training birthed out of that. They said, I'm getting such amazing transformation from the non-marketing side of what Carrot teaches. How can we bring this to the masses? So this right here is one of our clients, Ricky. <laughs> What's up, buddy? I uh, appreciate it, man. This right here is one of our clients, Ricky Grand. And Ricky Grand is just an hour north of me. Uh, in a uh, place called Eugene, Oregon. And the first time he showed up to one of our care camp events, he was in a spot where his energy was getting massively drained. He didn't like his business, or at least uh, at least half of his business. He was making in the mid six figures, but was hitting these ceilings that he couldn't get over. And him and his brother, who's his business partner, they were having some little conflicts here and there, and he's having conflicts at home as well because work was soaking up his energy and he's leaving his crumbs for his family. And I remember as we had a chance to kind of teach some of the principles I'm going to teach you guys and gals today. He came back for a carrot camp later. And this is not a sales pitch for carrot camp. We just had it. Our next one's, you know, until September, they sell out crazy fast every time. This is not a, 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 a carrot camp sales pitch. <clears throat> but when he came back for the next one um, and he followed what we're going to be teaching in this workshop, some of his life transformed. His relationship with his wife got way better because he was now focusing on the right things in his schedule and his time. His business had started to grow. They went from 300,000 a year to making big mo um, um, uh, business model shifts to doing over a million dollars a year just 18 months later following some of the unlocks we're gonna be teaching. And um, they've been really growing. This guy right here, this is Michael. Uh, Michael has a big business. He has you know, a good number of employees, multiple seven-figure business. And I was just talking with him 
and one of his team members, and even at the, the phase that they're at, well, well into the seven figures, he hit this massive what we call pain line. I'm going to talk about the pain line. Um, no, nope, you're not the only one here, man. I'm going to talk about the pain line as we go into this and figure out, like, what pain line are you in? Well, the pain line he hit in the, in the three million and above is a massive pain line. And he didn't know how to solve that. And so you start to then uh, get, get distracted by opportunity. We start to look at all the challenges we're having in our business. And once we know and we can pinpoint where we are in the business journey, then we can give you a prescription. I'm going to show you guys how to pinpoint where you are in the business journey and then give you some prescriptions to help you get through those pain lines. Okay. So we're just going to pop into here. I want to show you, the, I want to show you this right here. This is our company mission. And our company mission is really important for many, many reasons. But for the main reason is this, is, is our mission is exactly what we're doing on this call here. Our mission is to inspire and empower real estate professionals to gain true freedom and make a greater impact with their businesses. And as we were coming into this year and looking at our, our, our mission and our plan for the year with Carrot, one of the big things that stood out to us is we said, man, We've done so well at helping people nail the lead generation side of things through our evergreen marketing tools and through all of that content. But really the only place that they can come right now that you guys can come to be able to learn about the rest of the equation to build that business of freedom and impact, you know, to build a team and buy back your time and to add purpose into your business is that carrot cam. And so we said, let's start teaching this more and more. And this is the start of it. Uh, about a year ago, I took on my first coaching student, the guy in the middle name was Alex. Um, Martinez. Alex Martinez has been a Carrot customer for years. I'm coaching him for his other business, which is a multi-million dollar education business. And I really found a major passion for these topics I'm going to teach you. And the three topics that I taught him uh, that you're going to learn tonight massively changed the way his business started to be operated. He started to get more free time, started to actually make more money more easily, and he started to hire the right people around him to do that. All right, guys. So hopefully this is a similar unlock to you. Well, one, 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 one time, uh, the first time I ever saw this quote was probably five years ago. And as I'm going through this workshop with you all, the biggest thing I want you to keep at the forefront of your mind is the vision of who you want to become, right? Because I can teach you all day long how to market. I can teach you all day long what business strategy you, you, you can do. I can teach you hybrid investing, you know, being an agent and an investor. I can teach you all those things. But what, what, what really influences the business strategy isn't your goals. It shouldn't be the dollar amounts that you're going after. It should be the person you want to become. It should be, who do you want to become? What do you want your life to be like in five years and 10 years and 20 years? How do you want to show up to life? How do you want people to look at you? How do you want to be remembered when you're gone, right? That's the most important thing that you need to be focusing on that will influence your business decisions because your business should fuel your personal vision, your personal uh, you, you shouldn't fuel your business. And too many of us are backwards on this, right? And I'm going to be walking through how to make a big shift on this. But this quote, someone once told me, the definition of hell is the last day you have on earth, the person you became will meet the person you could have become, right? This is so, so key, guys. We're going to be talking about this more and more. I love it, Scott. I love it. Scott says, I want to ingest more of Trevor's mindset. Dude, that's, uh, I, I love it, man. So you're going to get a bunch of that today. You're going to get a bunch of that today. So I was reading this book. Uh, I'm going to grab this book really quick. <laughs> so this book, y'all, if you guys want to give a graduation gift or you want to read this book, if I, were to, if I were to suggest any single book to every human being on earth that should be like required reading when you graduate high school and college and then five years later and then every year from uh, after that in your life, it should be this book right here. It's Jim Rohn's book, The Five Pieces to Life's Puzzle. Okay, The, the Five Major Pieces to Life Puzzle. And this book is a crazy simple read, like barely over 100 pages. And I can tell you that this has had probably among the greatest impacts in my life because it teaches me, it taught me certain mental models. I read it the first time in 2008 and I read it recently again and it made just as much of an impact. I want to read you this section from it. Uh, the future rewards are always there waiting for us. As certainly as we once dreamed, we can dream again. As surely as we once believed, we can believe again, no matter where we are right now, we still have the ability to change it all. Okay, guys, the, the journey towards success is a journey of a thousand steps. And it begins with a single book or a single webinar, right? Or a single promise finally kept. Finally kept. It begins with the, 
with the awakening of our sleeping spirit brought on by the dreams of all that could be. What I want to do on this training, guys, I want to unlock the dreams that you have that maybe your business is beating out of you right now, right? I want to unlock those dreams again and show you a path on how to run your business in a better way to truly build a business of freedom and impact. But the major thing is if you're at a spot that you don't like right now in your business or life, this moment could be the moment for you that you change it. Right? You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next week. You don't have to wait for, for two months from now. You can do it. A single trigger, whether it's a book or a concept you get from this call or in our epic coaching program, a single trigger can mean all the difference for you. All right? So hopefully one of these concepts I bring it to you can be that trigger. Uh, Ali Brown says there's no better personal development tool than running your own business. And, and it's so true. And, and I'm going to show you guys the different levels of business and how uh, and how that works and how you need to grow through each phase. But first, before we dive into that, I want you guys to pop, pop in the comments box if you've ever felt this way. Have you ever felt this way or said these things to yourself? I, I feel the more my business grows, the harder it gets. You know, will it ever get easier? Uh, man, I thought when I hit X amount in revenue, things would be different. Maybe it'll happen at the next revenue level, right? Too many weeks in a row, I feel work has drained more energy than it's given me. Uh, guys, pop in the comments box if any of these uh, resonate with you right now. Uh, I, I lost my motivation for this business and, and work in general. You, you just don't want to show up to do the work in the business that you've created, right? Man, I, I hit my someday goals already. And what do I do now? I, I, I feel kind of empty because I thought the clouds apart, the angels would thing, once these goals would hit, what do I do now? right? I was told to delegate and build a team. I did. Things are even harder now than before, right? Uh, who on here has a team that you're starting to build? Is it getting harder for you? Um, I say I'm doing this for my family, but I'm exhausted when I get home leaving the crumbs for them. Yeah, that, that's, that's one thing that whenever I go to a mastermind, everyone has, or even at carrot camps, you have the slide, right? The slide that shows your, your why, it shows your family. And people say, here's my why. You know, it's my family. And I think we've all done that or thought that. So why is it that oftentimes we end up leaving those crumbs for the very people that we say are our why? I don't think it's because of intent. I don't think it's because of desire. I think our desire is that. I think we just don't know the path and how to build a business so it doesn't do that to us, right? And this call is going to help you guys find that path, okay? Uh, I never want a team. I never wanted a team. It sounds miserable and it'll tie me down. I like starting businesses, not running them. It must be time to start something new. If you've ever thought of these, pop it through the comments box. So my hope in this 90 minutes, y'all, is to kind of give you some perspective changes on the most important resources that you should be doing, put you know, you should be following uh, as an owner of your company. And what you what should you focus on? Uh, the second thing is I want to give you clarity on the growth levels. There's very, very defined levels, very defined levels. Now, when you know these levels and you know the pain points you're going to feel when you hit them and you know the prescription, y'all, when you know these levels, it's almost like having a cheat code in business. And over the years, I've compiled these levels as, as I've grown from zero to you know, eight figures a year. And you get to learn from these levels so you can figure out where you are, recognize the pain points you're in, how to get over them. Okay, and I want to help you get off of what I call the turn and burn cycle and into a vision that pumps you up and really fuels your impact. All right, guys. So uh, if you guys are new to the carrot ecosystem, pop in the comments box if you're new, um, just so I know if you're brand new, this is the first thing you've ever uh, heard from carrot. Uh, if you're if you're not new to the ecosystem, I know Scott's been here for quite some time. Well, what's up, dude? But this is a, this is a little bit of who I am. On the right side there, it's my my family, my wife Carly. And uh, my, my three young kids up at the lake cabin, we go up there for a week or two every summer. And that time is coming right up, which I'm pumped about. And then over on the left side is my work family. Uh, we're about 60 or so strong here at Carrot, 60 full-time employees, uh, U.S.-based. And we've been fortunate enough to build a business that's been one of the fastest growing companies in America five years in a row, which less than one half of 1% of companies ever achieve. Now, the reason I bring this up isn't because of that. OK, it's not because of the growth. It's because while I've grown through all these phases, I've gone through every pain line you can imagine. You're, I'm going to tell you what a pain line is here in a second. I've gone through all the pain lines. I've experienced you know, what happens when you cross over 300,000 and when things break and they get hard. And what is the unlock to get over that and actually still have time and make make your family and your hobbies and your passions your priority? I know what it feels like to cross over a million, three million, 10 million, and all the pain lines that come with it, and who you need to hire at each level, 
and all those things. So we're going to be bringing some of this insight that I've built over the years and that we that we're coaching with our epic um, our new epic program, uh, so you guys can benefit from it too. So this picture is from uh, way back when. This would have been taken, I think, in two thousand. This is probably 2010. Uh, this is in Charleston, South Carolina. We were out at a little uh, cafe for lunch. And this is the first mastermind group that I ever was a part of. Uh, and this was a mastermind group that myself and the guy second to the left um, with the gray shirt, his name is Patrick. He was my former business partner. We started a company in 2008 together. And um, we, we ran that company together for about four years. And at the time that we, that we had parted ways, and I'll talk about why we parted ways and how I hit this massive pain line around that time. And I didn't know how to grow through it. And so the only thing that I could, could do to get away from that pain was to get away from the business, which is a major flaw. And I'm going to show you guys how to not make that same mistake that I made. But around this time, uh, I started to really learn the value of getting around the right people who could motivate me, energize me, but also really speak into me to help me recognize the pain points, the pain lines, and get through them. And this group of people still today is the mastermind uh, that I've been running ever since for over 12 years now. This is a, a shot of a group of us that were down in Napa racing some cool cars. Uh, you know, guys like Matt Andrews, my good friend Ryan Fletcher. And, uh, and for me, this is what business is about. It's about building relationship. It's about learning and growing. The business just happens to be the tool that gives us the privilege of having personal growth. The money is the reward on the other side of it that we get as a privilege of doing business well. All right, the fruit of it for me is the relationships. And uh, I've got this, this, um, this deal on, on my wall right here. The ultimate goal as an entrepreneur isn't money. It's complete control of your time. And this was a realization I had about three to four years into my entrepreneurship journey. And I made a massive shift I'm going to tell you about here in a second that completely changed the way I thought about business. It turned me from uh, uh, most of my business, my work was draining my energy to most of it giving me energy. It turned it from me getting stuck at 300K to 400K a year to now you know, growing over eight figures a year in revenue. It, it, it made it so where I saw building a team as a limiting factor and something that would hold me down to now having an amazing team built the right way with the right mindset is actually the very thing that, uh, that provides that freedom and impact. So just lock this into your noggin, y'all. The ultimate goal as an entrepreneur isn't money. It's complete control of your time. So how do we get that time, right? How, how, how do we get that time now? Um, I want you guys to take a picture of this. You literally take up your, your cell phone, take a picture of this, because I'm going to be referring back to this a lot. I was sitting across the street over here right after this call. I'm going to go right back to that coffee shop and do some drawing, some writing, get some lunch. But uh, I was sitting across the street at the coffee shop, the gathering grounds, uh, years and years ago. Okay. This is probably four or five years ago. And I was thinking, I, I, I looked at my personal vision story, you know, where I wanted to be in 20 years, 10 years and five years. And I'll even show you how I do that here in a second. But I was looking at that personal vision story and I was asking, you know, what, what type of businesses do I want to build? What type of businesses or businesses that will, that will truly fuel this vision I have for my life? And that vision for my life does not include me grinding away every day of my life and work. That vision does not include me running my businesses on the day-to-day -day basis. It includes me doing the things that give me the most energy, that add the most value to the world, and keep me in a spot where I can add value in a massive way, and, it, and I do it effortlessly, and in, in a way that doesn't require me to go, go against my grain, and then be you know, ending each week just completely depleted of energy. And so I said, the main thing that I want to build businesses for is all circled around something I call freedom and impact. And as I'm sitting there drawing on my iPad, uh, I, I said, well, what are the three things, what are the things that, that, are, that must be included in a business to, to give freedom and impact? Well, the first thing uh, that we usually find later than we hope uh, is purpose, right? And I'm, we're going to talk about purpose here in a little bit. And you, you've probably heard the word purpose or find your purpose. I mean, we're not going to talk about that part of it today. Okay. We don't have enough time for to help you find your purpose on this call. I've got, I've got workshops and impact sessions on that for our Epic Plan members, but don't have enough time for it on this call. But it starts with purpose. We have to know that what we're doing is important for the world. You know, we're not doing it just for ourselves. We're not doing it just for money. Okay. The next thing is we have to be able to be able to build a business that that brings in consistent profits because if we don't have a business that brings consistent profits we're on this income roller coaster that's stressful and you can't 
then uh, predictably go hire people to get your time back. And you can't predictably give money or give resources if that's something you want to do to make the impact. You can't do that. You're always running paycheck to paycheck each month. You're always nervous on where your leads are and deals are going to come from in one, two, three, four, five, six months. And so I said the best way to run a business of freedom and impact is to build consistency into the business so you know three months out, six months out, eight months out, within 10% variance what your income is going to be, right? And many of you guys might be looking at this going, Trevor, I don't know how that's possible. Maybe you're a real estate agent. Maybe you're a real estate investor and you're going, dude, I don't think it's possible for me to know what my income level is going to be within a 10% variance in six months. It depends on the market. Well, that's a flawed mindset. That's a limiting belief. I'm going to show you how to get out of that limiting belief. Okay. The third part of it, but also among the most important is once you have clear purpose and you have a, a business strategy and the marketing that helps you have consistent profits and you're turning consistent profits. Now you're working your butt off and you might not have the time to spend that money or the time to spend with family. So now you need to buy back your time. You need to buy that time back and build your energy and focus on energy and time. Okay. And so when you do these, you have purpose and you have a clear vision. You set a clear strategy in where you're going. You build an evergreen marketing, add leverage to your marketing. This gets you consistent profits. Now you're busy. So you need to buy back your time. You use a process I'm going to go through in this workshop called the energy audit. I'm going to show you this workshop or this in, in the workshop. And I'm going to be giving you guys the worksheet to do it on this. You start to add the right team members to your to your team, hiring the right way so you attract amazing people. And then you go back up here to where you're like, dude, I can now focus on the things that give me the most energy and drive the most purpose, okay? So I have a few questions for you guys and engage in the chat box. Um, who in here feels like you're doing impactful work? You really enjoy the work you're doing and your income is consistent, but man, your business runs you right now. You know, you're, you're making good income, you're bringing in deals, but you're going, dude, this business runs me. I'm tied to it. I can't go on vacation for two weeks, even if I wanted to. Um, it feels like I am literally supporting this business. And if I walk away, the income starts to go down. Okay, let me know if that's you. If that's you, you're in this mode right here called the hustle and grind mode. Okay, and the hustle and grind mode is okay to be in, in the short term, but not in the long term. I'm going to show you how to get out of that here in this workshop. Okay, what you're missing if you're in the hustle and grind mode is you're missing this over here. You're missing the strategies and the execution to be able to buy back your time and energy. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through how to do that today. Let's say you are making good money and you have ample time, but lacking true purpose and meaning. I remember one of our clients, Keith Sant, uh, he was here at his second or third carrot camp. And his first carrot camp, he was in this mode. He was in the hustle and grind mode. He was making good money. He felt his, his work was important, but man, he had no time and no energy because he was working 60 to 70 hours a week. Okay, then he baked in more evergreen marketing through Carrot, so better leads were coming in. And then he showed up, you know, one or two times later. He's like, dude, I bought my time back. You teach me how to buy my time back. And I'm working rather than 60 hours a week, I'm working 20 hours a week. But he goes, man, I'm feeling empty now. I, I, I don't know what to do with my time. And I just feel like an empty pit in my stomach. Why am I doing this? I'm not even spending the money I'm making. And so then we worked with him to add this element to it. If you're if you're in that, you're, you have a lifestyle business and you might be lacking purpose. And we can show you how to get that back in place. Now over here, if you enjoy your work, but you're on an income roller coaster, you're like, dude, I like my work, but man, my income is going up and down like this. Uh, that's hard to be on. You're, it's a passion project for you right now. And we need to bake the right strategy into your business and the right tools to get consistency up. All right, guys. So let me know in the comments box, which one you relate to. Are you in the passion project? Are you in the hustle and grind? Or are you in the lifestyle business? Let me know. That'll kind of help me as we dive in. So the first concept that I really grasped in 2012 as I was going through that challenge my previous company uh, is optimizing for energy, not productivity, not money, not, not for your goals. I know that sounds completely opposite and backwards from what most people do. But what most people are going to tell you to do is you optimize your time for the things that make you money, right? And you delegate the things that don't make you money. Well, I can tell you that that works to make money, but it is the opposite of what works to, to bring you a fulfilled life, okay? And when you optimize for energy, like I'm going to show you here, you actually end up making far more money as well, all right? So this is a picture of Patrick Riddle. This is four, and four or so years later after that previous picture on the complete opposite side of the country. I was in his stomping grounds in Charleston, the previous picture. Now this is him in my stomping grounds in Roseburg, Oregon at one of our wineries. And this was just before 
I had, I had hit the breaking point in my own, in that business together with him where it was draining so much of my energy that I didn't want to do the work anymore. Okay. I, I, I was in the hustle and grind mode. We were making good money. I felt our work was impactful, but I had no clue how to run business in a way to buy my time back. And, and I, I was hitting this pain line. We're going to talk about what the pain lines are here. But what I, what I didn't realize at that time is there's three key resources in our lives. Okay. There's three key resources in our lives. There's time, there's money, and then there's health and energy. The, the crazy thing is here, y'all, that the only one of these resources that actually is readily available to get more of on demand, like the only one you can get, you can get more of on demand when you have the skill sets uh, is money. Yet we treat it like it's scarce. We treat it like it's the most scarce thing in the world, okay? But over here, health and energy, that's the only one that's guaranteed to go down over time, okay? Yeah, yes, yeah, and, and the challenge is it's guaranteed to go down over time, yet it's oftentimes the last thing we put we put on our priority list. We, we try to fit in working out. We try to fit in being healthy. We try to fit in these things, always thinking that some year later is going to be when we actually focus on that, okay? Then over here on time, we focus lots of time and energy trying to manage time, which is a losing game. You can't manage time. You can manage your priorities on how you spend your time. But these are the three key resources. So I started to sit there on a flight. I was on a flight over uh, to Nashville, uh, and I'm going to be in Nashville here in about another month. I was going to the Investor Fuel Mastermind, and they asked me to do a talk on this topic. And I started drawing some stuff out and I said, okay, what are, how, how do I think about time, energy, uh, and your time, energy, and uh, money in, in the continuum of our lives. Like when should we start to do what I call buying back that time and energy, all right? So if you look at this one here, this blue line kind of represents your energy. Now, of course, we're not a straight line down like that, y'all, but that's just a representation that when we're younger, we're gonna have more health and energy than when we're, you know, when we're 90, right? So hopefully it's more of a, a leveling off than it's a slight decline over the over the the, the, the last part of our lives. Okay, but generally, generally, time, uh, health and energy declines over time. All right, now this yellow one is actually uh, the yellow one is actually money. Okay, the yellow one's money. When we're younger, we don't have a lot of it. We're not we don't we're not making money. We start to get our jobs in, in the twenties and thirties and and right around somewhere between you know, mid twenties to mid forties, we probably start to make some sort of money, right? We start to make some sort of money. A lot of people say your twenties are your years to, to figure the basics out. Your thirties are the years where you're going to be start like really starting a business and, and, and getting some initial success. Your forties are your empire building years. 50 plus is kind of legacy and starting to really uh, make sure that you have that time back to build legacy. So you see your income going up like this, and then it you know tails off at the end as your income, your earning potential goes down. And then over here, this is your time. When you're young, you have a lot of time, not a lot of money, you have a lot of health. And then as you start to get a job and other commitments, your time goes down, your free time goes down. And then in the traditional model of retirement, then your, your free time starts to go up traditionally after you work your butt off for 30 years in a job, right? And that's not what we're about here at Carrot. But what, what I found is there's this little sweet spot right here in the middle, okay, where you have good income potential, you should be likely earning some level of income, where you're, you still have some level of, of free time, but you need to get that time back, actually, and where you still have the health and energy to be able to go enjoy that time the most. Now, that, that, that little green box could be, could be way wider. It could, be, it could go up in your 60s or 70s, depending on the individual. But what, what I want to illustrate here is this, guys, is your 20s are your grind mode, your 30s are your grow mode, your 40s and into your 50s are what I call your buyback mode, and then your 50s plus, you know, around that legacy compound mode. Now, once again, these lines could move any way, any direction. Uh, you know, Colonel Sanders, I remember, he started KFC in his 60s, so he was actually in his, in his grind mode in his 40s and 50s, and he was in his grow mode in his 60s. His legacy mode became after that. So it's really individually you determine where you are on this. The lesson is why shouldn't we be looking at buying back our time when we have more income potential and when we have more health to enjoy it, okay? So my coach, Dan Martell, he says the early phases of a company, you don't hire to grow the company. You hire to buy back your time. When you do, the company will grow as a byproduct. And so if anyone on this call has a team member, your first EA or, or VA, um, and, you're, and you're like, dude, 
I don't know how to hire correctly. I don't know how to get the right people around me. This mental, th this mindset shift for me was a big deal because if you know that your job is to figure out what you need to buy back your time from, and I'm going to show you guys how to figure that out, then you need to go find someone who likes to do that thing you don't like to do, right? So there's a process. I want to have you guys go grab it. Go to carrot.com forward slash energy. That's carrot.com forward slash energy. It's a free resource. Um, I'll type in the URL here. Carrot.com forward slash energy. You can go grab this worksheet. It's called the energy audit. And the energy audit is a process I made in 2012, right after that, that time with Patrick sitting at the winery here in Roseburg, Oregon, where I hit my breaking point and I, and I told him, I'm like, man, I love you to death. Um, I just really need out of this business. I, I couldn't see a vision for me where this business was a part of helping me re reach my personal vision, but I want to keep the relationship with Patrick. So we parted ways. He took that business and ran with it. And I pulled away and drew a line down the middle of the paper. And I said, what am I going to do now? Okay, how do I want to spend my time? What do I want to not do any more of uh, so I don't come to this moment again where I feel like I have to leave a business because it's so painful and I don't want to wake up and do that work today, okay? I drew the line down the middle. And I said, what most people do is they have you write what makes you money on one side and what doesn't make you money on the other side, right? And then they say, do more of the things that make you money and delegate the things that don't make you money. And that's what I'd done the previous three years. And it led to lack of fulfillment, it led to energy drain, and it led to me hitting these, these growth ceilings I could not get over in business. I said, what if I flip-flop this? And, and what if I, I just don't really care right now if money is my number one, I just want my energy back. I wanna be able to focus on my family again and my, my relationships and my hobbies and, and do the things that truly give life, okay? And so I, I erased those money and, and, and no money, and I wrote, gives energy, drains energy. And I started to write down the things that give me energy and life in general and drain my energy on an average work week, okay? And that's things in life and business. I got done with my list and I said, okay, what, what's not measured can't be moved. And so I put a little thing at the bottom. So what percentage of my average work week is energy drain versus energy give, okay? And at that time, it was about 80% of my, of my average work week was draining my energy, okay? About 80% was draining my energy. No wonder y'all, that I didn't want to do the work in the business that I had created for myself because it was draining, it was draining the life out of me and I didn't know how to get it back. Okay. And so I wrote that down. I said, okay, so if 80% of it's draining my energy, what if I took one or two of these things in the energy drain column, I circle one or two of them and I write down how many hours a week those things are, are, are taking in my schedule. How many hours a week am I spending doing or thinking about those things? And let me pick the one or two that are draining the most energy out of me, even if they make me money, even if that thing literally is the thing that makes money and it drains my energy, I have to figure out a way to not do that anymore. Okay. So I circled them. One of them, I might've wrote seven hours for this activity, another one five, right? Then I said, what if I, instead of making my priorities each month and each quarter based off of me hitting these monetary goals, what if I made the priorities based off of moving this energy audit goal? What if I was, what if my main goal was to move from 80% energy drain to 80% energy give over the next one, two, three years. And every quarter I was going to find the things that drain my energy. I'm going to pull back and make a process. I'm going to find someone to delegate it to. Okay. They, it's delegated. Well, I manage them. Okay. Now I go over here and then I add in things that give me energy, even if they don't make money. Okay. That's the key guys. You can, you want to swap out energy drains, even if they make you money, you have someone else do those things because it's not sustainable and you're going to hit those growth ceilings if you don't like to do them. And then you swap back in the things that give you energy, even if they don't make you money. Let's say it's working out. Let's say you love doing podcasts, but you have no clue how you can make money doing it. Okay, let's say you love date nights, but you're not going on date nights right now. Write all those down and say, dude, I have an extra seven hours a week now because I created a process to get rid of that energy drain. And now I'm going to add four hours in of doing this thing and three hours in of doing this. And I'm going to start working out again. As soon as I started to do that, guys, I was continually trading out the energy drains for the energy gives over time, and it completely changed my life. And not only did it change my life, but it changed the business as well, okay? So uh, you, you, you want to then take those items and delegate them, and we don't have time to dive into today on the delegation side of it. Uh, we have entire processes, playbooks uh, internally we use, and processes and playbooks that we use with our Epic Plan members. It's our new high-level uh, coaching program that, that, we, that we launched a few months ago. 
Uh, we have those in there. But what I want to talk about is the next principle. Okay, so the first thing, kind of going back, is once I recognize energy over money, energy over productivity, then my life started to change. Okay, the next thing that started to happen, guys, I'm diving in and doing more of the work that gives me energy. My life, my business is giving me life again, and and I, I'm continually trading out the bad and for the good. It required me to build a team, right? It required me to build a team. At first, it was it, it was an assistant for 10 hours a week. And then that assistant turned into 20 hours a week. Then it was eventually 40 hours a week. And then it was eventually, shoot, I need someone to do this now. And I need someone to do this now. And I need someone to do this other thing. I continued to trade out the things that I didn't want to do anymore so someone who liked doing those things could do them, okay? So then my business started to grow. And what I discovered was I kept on hitting these, these pain lines in my business where I wanted to kind of give up sometimes, where business was getting so darn hard that I started to second guess, guess myself again and go, dude, why am I hitting these ceilings again? And what I discovered through another mentor of mine, his name is Alex Sharpen, is um, things break at threes and tens, okay? If, when you understand the levels of business, you can unlock growth. It's almost like a cheat code. Uh, my wife and I, we, we recently did another half marathon a few weeks ago up at uh, Eugene at Hayward Field. And a buddy of mine, Kylie, who was at uh, a recent carrot camp, he was talking about a big goal he had set last year where he did, he did a marathon every single month last year. And his first marathon he ever did, he said, dude, I didn't realize the wall I was going to hit at mile 18 and the wall I was going to hit at mile 22 again. And he said, the first time I ran a marathon, I hit that 18 mile wall. And he goes, dude, I wanted to give up. It was hard. I wasn't sure if my body was going to break, if I was going to make it through it. I, I, I wasn't sure if I was uh, going to be, you have to exit the race out of exhaustion. And he wasn't prepared for it. He didn't have the right nutrition to be able to wade through it as well as possible. So he put his head down, he worked through it, and he realized that the second wind came in. He figured out how to get through that pain line, that wall that hit, and then he hit the other one. He said, he said dude, now that I've done that once, I know there's going to be a pain line or a wall that's going to be hitting me about mile 18 and about mile 22, so I prepare for it now. Right? I've got the right nutrition, I've got the goop, I've got the, the right electrolytes, and I know when I hit that pain line that it's going to end soon. I can keep pushing through it. And the same thing happens in business, guys. When you know those different pain lines in business, I'm going to show you guys what they are, you, you then can put your head down and work through them because you know they're going to end eventually if you take the right steps. If you continue, just like on the marathon, you get the right fuel and you put one step in front of the other, you're going to get that second when you're going to start to grow again. Okay, the reason you may not have the business of your dreams today is because you're likely not capable of running that business right now. So if you have a, if you have a dream and you're, you're watching people on Facebook or IG and you're going, dude, I want a business like that. I'm as smart as they are. Why haven't I figured this out yet? Why doesn't my business look like that? It's not that it's not possible for you. It's that you as an individual are not yet strong enough skill set wise, mentally, whatever it is to be run that, running that business. You're currently not capable to run that business of your dreams. It doesn't mean that you can't become capable, right? And I'm going to show you how to become capable and what to look for. Uh, so 2016, I'd, I'd started Carrot by that time. We started Carrot around 2014. That was the company that came out of um, me discovering the energy audit and parting ways with my previous business partner to go chase down a business that I felt could bring more purpose and passion and energy. And uh, a couple of years into the business, we were right around that $1 million dollar pain line. Okay. I'm going to show you guys what these pain lines are and how to recognize when you're in them here in a second. And during that time I was delegating, I had some team members doing some things, but there were some big things that I continued to do and have on my lap that were draining my energy, but made the company a lot of money. And so I would stay up until one, two, three in the morning, at least two, three, four days a week. During that time, I was in grind mode big time. I was in the hustle and grind. We were making consistent money. I loved what we were doing, but man, I did not know how to buy back my energy and time at that time. And I remember going on a trip over to Klamath Falls, Oregon. So we're in Roseburg, Oregon. It's about two hours over the mountains, a, a road I've driven a million times. Uh, in the middle of the day, I got, had my, my kids in the back seat, my wife uh, next to me reading. And it was in the middle of the day. I remember driving up through the mountains. There's a you know, windy road. There's guardrails and ravines. And uh, one second I was awake and driving and uh, wasn't tired. I didn't feel tired. Uh, the next second I was asleep. And uh, it, it's, it's, the, the, it's the scariest feeling when you wake up 
and you instantly realize you're going 65 miles an hour in a highway with your whole family in your car and you're heading towards a guardrail with a ravine on the other side of it. And just like the movies, y'all, I mean, it's like you, you look at it, you go, there's no way that would ever happen in real life. That's, that's just a movie thing. I woke up just in time. I wasn't asleep for very long, probably three, four seconds, five seconds, enough, enough for the car to start to go off of the road. And I swerved, bumper hit the guardrail, um, and I stopped dead in the middle of the highway. Uh, 100 yards up, there's no guardrail. And it would have went over down the embankment if that's where we would have gone. And um, I know God was watching over me and, and, and the family. And there's a reason why I feel that, that, uh, that he didn't let us go off the cliff. But I stopped in the middle of the highway and I got out just cold um, sweat. And I'm like, babe, you've got to drive. And so she said, what happened? Because she was reading. So I fell asleep. And in that moment, y'all, uh, it, it hit me. I was building this business off, off the back of my own hours because I was saying that I'm doing this for them. All right, I'm doing this for my family. In that same mindset of I'll do this for my family, I can stay up late. It's not impacting my family. I almost killed my family. That moment I said, I'm going to go cold turkey. I'm not working nights or weekend anymore. I'm not working nights or weekend anymore. Okay. Um, and I didn't for almost three years. I didn't take the computer in the house. I didn't work nights, didn't work weekends, maybe one over the three years. And I said, the only way I'm going to continue to grow this business is I've got to figure out how to grow it to where it doesn't mean it. my time grows with it. Okay, my free time should grow, but not my time working in it. And that set me on the journey to really figure out what I'm teaching you today. And I, 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 want, to, I want to kind of pass this along. And I'm going to give you guys some executable things to do. But um, guys, time offers opportunity, but demands urgency. All right, we look at that time bubble back there in the previous slides and, and we say, dude, I'm 22 or I'm 40 or I'm 67 or whatever your age is, I've got time, right? Uh, one of my good friends in my church group, we have a weekly Bible study here uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, two weeks ago, we get a text message from him on a, on a Saturday and he said, uh, out of the blue, my mom passed. Uh, she wasn't sick, didn't have any apparent health issues. Uh, it was completely out of the blue, uh, no indicators at all. And um, when we look at those loved ones in our lives or even ourselves, we have time, but we don't know how much we've got, right? And so when we're asking ourselves, is it worth it for us to continue working down this path in a business that's sucking the soul out of us or sucking our energy? Or is it worth it for us to continue to trudge through this, trying to figure it all out ourselves rather than surrounding ourselves with the right people, the right community, the right resource to accelerate it? Um, I don't think it is. I always try to invest into the resources that help me accelerate things because time offers opportunity, but it demands urgency. All right, so I've talked about pain lines here in a bit, guys. I've talked about pain lines. What are the pain lines? So a, a pain line essentially is, is this. You're growing your business, and I'll walk you through what the pain lines are here in a second, but you're growing your business, and everything's going good. Then all of a sudden, everything starts to kind of get a little harder and get a little harder, and then you look back, and you go, oh my gosh, I'm in a spot where I don't like my work right now. I'm getting more of my energy drained than give. I'm not clear in where I'm supposed to be going. I keep hitting this wall. I can't get over this revenue number. Um, I am now going to do one of these things. I'm going to dial back my business, right? Uh, let me know, guys, if you guys can relate to this. Maybe I should just dial things back to where it's comfortable again. You know, maybe I should just dial back to where it's comfortable again because this is hard and it's not fun. Uh, man. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I want to build a million dollar business. I'm just going to settle in at 300 K because I know that and it was comfortable. But what, what happens is you're selling your impact in the world short when you do that, right? And it's a limiting belief that by growing your business means it being harder on you. It's actually easier when you grow your business and build a team than sticking at 300 K a year in revenue. And I'll tell you guys why here in a second. Okay. Uh, now the, the second one is you sell, you go, dude, I'm going to start looking to sell this thing. Okay, it's hard and I'm just going to sell my way out of the pain, right? But secretly, the main driver that you feel is it's the best way out of the pain or the third one, like Scott said, that that's him. And Scott, that's my, that's my default uh, mode when I hit the pain lines as well is, man, I don't want to make that call, right? Whatever that thing is that you know you need to do that creates more revenue. I don't want to make the call. I don't want to answer the email. I don't want to go to this appointment. I don't want to do whatever because you know that when you do that thing, it's going to create more pain. It's going to require you to bring in more revenue and now serve the person more and da, 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 and it's going to create more pain. You subconsciously 
feel that it'll create more sales and growth and more pain. So you don't do it. You sabotage. You avoid the things you need to do. And that starts to create a spiral, right? Like Scott says, because it sucks the life out of me, right? That, that's, that's the thing. So, so why, why is it then that we, we let these businesses do that? Well, it's not because, not because you want to. It's because we don't know the path. And so I'm going to be walking you guys through that path. Now, uh, one, one thing, guys, because I know everyone can't be on this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue teaching on this, on this training. So uh, we're not even anywhere near done yet, guys. It's going to be about 90-minute workshop. But the thing that I'm most passionate about at Carrot right now, we built a software company that helps you know, thousands and thousands of real estate investors and hybrid agents generate the best seller leads online, right? And buyers and tenants and everything else. But the thing I'm most passionate about is our company mission, helping you build the business of freedom and impact. I can help you get leads and close deals all day long. But if you come to Care Camp miserable about the business you created, I don't feel we've succeeded, right? And so that's why I'm going to teach my heart out here. But we do have a brand new program because when, when we would be talking to care campers and ca care campers like, dude, how can I keep plugging into this well of information to these resources? How can we get behind the scenes stuff from you, care, uh, Trevor, on how to build the team and how to build these mindset uh, shifts and these resource, the scorecards and this and that. And I recently hired a COO here at Carrot who stepped in about 90 days ago. And I now have ample time. And this is my number one focus at Carrot. It's to build this program called the Epic Program. And uh, I'll talk about it later, but I just got off of our weekly Epic Impact call. There's people on that call, $5 million business, $7 million business, 300K. Uh, half of them have executive assistants, half don't. But basically, it's an array between about 150K to 7 million. And I'm helping them grow through the pain lines right now. And it's such a joy. It's so much fun. So go check that out if you guys are interested in potentially seeing if the Epic program and group coaching with me uh, might be a fit for you to, to help unlock. But this is from a friend of mine, Alex Sharpen. And Alex, I met at a mastermind again uh, by a guy named Russell Brunson. I was in Russell Brunson's mastermind for about four to five years. And if you can, you can probably see a little bit of a, a, um, a theme here, y'all, right? Uh, where my life started to really change is when I surrounded myself with the right people. Uh, in 2010 or so, I started that mastermind. That mastermind still goes today. I'm going to be in Jackson, Wyoming with my mastermind group in about two and a half weeks. Amazing people. We do life together now. It's so much fun. And then I joined Russell Brunson's mastermind, surrounded around a, a, the next up level in my life of business owners. And I'm also in another group now uh, with my coach, Dan Martell, for the past five years. It's transformed my business life again. But what Alex taught me was things break at threes and tens. At the $100,000 to $300,000 mark, you're, you're in what he calls the promoter phase. Now, what is a promoter phase? Well, you're probably full-time in the business now, right? You're part-time before the 100K, but you have the ability to now go full-time likely, somewhere between $100,000 and $300,000, okay? The question going through your mind in this phase, if you're in that phase, and guys, let me know. Uh, pop in the comments box what phase you're in. Are you in promoter? Are you in builder? Are you in operator? Are you in leader? Are you in the seeker or starter? Let me know uh, as well. Pop in the comments box what phase you're in. All right. The question going through your head in the promoter phase is how do I get ahead? Right. Because you're working your butt off. You're full time now. You're starting to even work overtime. But you're like, dude, how do I get ahead more? It just seems like I'm working my ass off and I'm trying to get things moving forward and things are working. But it just seems like it's really hard. The biggest thing you need to drive and, and focus on is leverage lead generation. You have to nail your lead generation. Right. You have to nail it. You can't get over 300 K predictably and stay there. If you have not nailed your lead generation, which is, you know, that's, that's what we focus on at Carrot. And you have to be able to build systems that generate leads and convert them consistently. Okay. Once you do that, then you're going to be able to cross over the 300K mark. And 300K to a million is where you hit the next pain line. You're in the builder phase then. Okay. And the builder phase, you're working overtime now because you don't have enough money in there. Let's say you're bringing in three or 400K a year. There's not enough money in there to really have too many full-time employees. You might have one full-time employee at that, right? At 300K or 400K. You might have one, maybe you'll have two. And so you're still having, <clears throat> you're still having to work a lot and you're asking them, dude, how do I get further ahead still? So you need to take the leverage lead generation systems you've already got 
And now you need to make sure that you're leveraging sales. Now, what does that mean? If you're the only person doing sales or acquisitions, you likely somewhere in that, that 300K to a million need to have someone help you. You need to start delegating some of that likely, okay? Build systems and processes around what you do well. If you do sales well, document those systems and processes because that's a thing you're going to need to delegate some of that as you grow. And if you don't, you're going to hit the next pain line at the, at the $1 million mark, okay? $1 million to $3 million, the operators, this is where you start to learn to delegate time, okay? You ask, how does my team get me ahead now? So over here, it's how do you get ahead? Now you start to build a team. You're like, dude, how does my team get me ahead? And you need to build a team now and scale consistent delivery. Build a team and train them to do what you do well. Once again, buying back your time so you can shift to the things that give you the most energy. I'll, I'll stop at this one. The 3 million to 10 million is the leader. You are now delegating success. Uh, we, we talk about that deeply in our Epic program, what that means. And then you're saying, how does my team get ahead? You switch from how do I get ahead? How does my team get me ahead? Now to go, bam, I'm serving them fully. How does my team get ahead now? All right. So we're not going to dig into this too much more. I just want to show you guys that because at the threes and tens, things break and you can't cross over. People who can't delegate are blocked at 300K a year. Okay. If you cannot delegate effectively, you will be blocked at 300K a year. You might get up to 400, but you're going to go back down. You might get to five, but you're going to go back down. Okay. People who can't work through other people are blocked at 2 million a year. What does that mean? Well, isn't that the same as delegation, Trevor? No, it's, it's, it's quite different actually. So delegation is I'm delegating tasks, right? Around that 1 million to 3 million mark, if you can't delegate through other people or if you can't work through other people, it might be a manager who leads two sales reps, okay? It might be uh, you know, an acquisitions manager, uh, a dispo manager, something like that. But you need to work through people who likely manage other people. You're going to be stopped at the 2 million if you can't do that. Okay, people who can't hire and lead independent builders are blocked at 10 million a year. What does that mean? Well, an independent builder is an executive level person. It's a person who literally you hire and they come in with playbooks. They come in with experience. They go, they bring the strategy in even, and then they go build. They don't have to come back to you for all this stuff. When we hired our CEO, Angie, I can tell you that the difference it made in my business and my life and for our team members as well is, was transformational because she's an independent builder. She's able to come in and bring her experience growing through a larger company to be able to go build what we need to do and just get me out of the way. Literally every month, her and I have a call that figures out where am I in the way still? And she gets me out of the way. Okay, each stage requires learning a new skill to break through. All right, y'all, if you're doing over 300K a year and you don't have an executive assistant, you are the assistant. And if you are the assistant, you're doing assistant level tasks at assistant level pay, and you need to trade that up. Okay, if you're looking for a COO, I'll, I'll talk with, with a lot of our Epic Plan members about this. Uh, you know, guy goes, man, I want to get a COO by the end of the year. I'm doing 300K a year right now, and I really want to get out of the day-to-day -day operations of my business. If you're looking for a COO and you don't have an assistant yet who's full-time for you, you do not need a COO. Hire an assistant first. You always start to hire at the lower pay scale to swap out your time, uh, the lower level time, and then you work your way up. Too many people try to swap out the, the opposite. Okay, so there, there's these things. There, there's these things called discipline ceilings uh, as, as you go and as you grow. That at each one of those pain lines in business, you are going to personally hit a ceiling. Your current habits and disciplines have a cap on them. Okay, your current habits and disciplines, the way that you're showing up for your business and for your family and for in in, in your life will only allow you to go to a certain point. And uh, when you go and when you grow, it requires you to completely adopt new habits and disciplines that are needed to be a leader of a business at that next level. And so it's going to look something like this. You want to have more achievement and here's the time and things are going great. And then, man, you, you start hitting this, you start hitting this discipline ceiling. You go, bam, I am stuck here. Okay. You can't grow your business until you grow personally. And then you grow personally, you start working out, you start to, uh, you start to figure out how to, how to make your priorities, uh, you document your priorities better on your Mondays and Fridays, and now you start to grow. And bam, it, you're growing really good for six months, for a year, for two years, whatever it is. Then you start to, you, things start to get hard again. You hit the next discipline ceiling. 
Okay. And then you figure that out. You might be in that, in that stuck mode for six months. You might be in that stuck mode for three months. You might be in it for three weeks. The, the, the amount of time you stay in that stuck mode depends on how fast you're able to get out of those, uh, out of those modes, right? Progress is impossible without change. Y'all, if you want to grow your business, you have to change. What we oftentimes do is we oftentimes look at those around us as they have to change. Now, to grow the business, you've got to change, right? And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And so what I'm asking you to do on, the, on this call is I want you to change your mind about, about your business, about your life, about, about what's most important. I want you to think about the person that you want to become. And that's where we shift into vision here, okay? Because we cannot change if we don't know where we're going. Okay, because we, we then don't know what we need to change. We don't know how we need to change. And the third concept I'm going to be teaching here, you here, y'all, is vision is the fuel for life and business. Are you currently running on fumes? Vision is the fuel for life and business. Are you currently running on fumes? So I, I, I read a book called Essentialism. I actually grabbed this book a few minutes ago. I was talking with my Epic Plan members about a concept in the book. And I, I love this graphic that I got out of the book, okay? This graphic shows the person on the left, the person on the right, and essentially you are the person, right? You, you pick which one you are. The person on the left, you have a certain amount of energy. Now, we're going to go back to energy. Now. You have a certain amount of energy in your life, right? And you can expend that energy going in a thousand different directions, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, and then being frustrated, getting stuck. And then going and starting something new and stopping it and getting frustrated and stuck and getting going and starting something new and stopping it and getting frustrated and getting stuck. And then starting, you, you guess where I'm going, right? What ends up happening is we end up being depleted. We end up not achieving our goals. We end up wondering, am I really made to do this, right? Is, is, is this life really for me? And, and I can tell you guys, it is. It, it, it totally is. The decision you have to make is the same decision I made in 2012 when I had four or five different businesses going, I was going in every different direction. I had to pull back and I had to say, okay, what if I was to focus on one thing? What if I just did one thing? And I did that thing really well. And I gave myself a full year to do that one thing. And I said, man, I'm going to press on this one thing until it works. Because I've seen other people make this thing work. So I know it works. I just need to make it work. I'm going to focus on one thing. Okay. Once I started to do that in 2012, a decade ago, once again, my life changed. Right, That concept shifted. And, and, and the, the, the thing that got me to finally focus on one thing that I realized it wasn't, it wasn't that all these different things weren't good ideas. They were all good ideas. I had, to, I, had to, I had to ask the question, where do I want to go in life so I can actually pick the right idea to get me where I want to go? If you don't know where you want to go in life or the person that you want to be, it's very, very hard to then pick the right path, to pick the right project, to pick the right thing. Okay, everything looks good. And so... You, you, start to, you start to move into this cycle that I call the three-year turn and burn cycle. Uh, and guys, let me know if, if, if you resonate with this. Uh, and and I, I discovered this both in myself, but also talking to hundreds of entrepreneurs in the real estate space. And I'm going, oh my gosh, there's a pattern here, guys. There's a pattern here. And I can like clockwork talk to somebody right now and pretty much peg how long you've been in business based on the pains you're going through right now in your business. Okay. And what happens is we start our business. We have a vision for that. Oftentimes, it's not this big grand vision. Oftentimes, the vision is get away from this job I don't like. Oftentimes, the vision and motivation is uh, get away from uh, you know, this situation I don't like, is to prove these people wrong, whatever it is. There's some sort of se sense of motivation and vision that usually is pushing us away from something we don't like. That's usually why we start our companies, and that's usually what the initial motivation source is of our companies, okay? Once we get the company going a bit and we're in the, year, the second year, third year, fourth year, or kind of you, you've gotten some consistency, you're closing some deals, and now you're kind of in the spot where you have some success, but you lost the newness of it, right? It's not as new anymore. It's not as fresh anymore. Uh, that's about that spot there. You start to get bored. You start to get unmotivated, a little bit stressed, distracted by new opportunities. You feel like you're busy with no end in sight and you're kind of wandering without clarity. Uh, guys, if anyone is resonating to this nod behind the screen or, or pop in the box, if that's you, what we need to do instead is we need to now 
rather than getting distracted and going on the three-year turn and burn cycle and we we have our business go down like this and then we 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 have the crisis moment go oh my gosh i got to get focused again then we build something back up and then you hit the same cycle what we need to do instead is we need to refresh or refuel our vision okay going back to that analogy with the car uh if, if you have a car and you are driving down the road uh, one beautiful thing that car companies have given us is the ability to know when our car is almost out of fuel, right? You have this big red light that pops up on your dashboard that sh shows out of fuel. And now these days, it'll even tell us how many miles we have left on that tank, right? And that's such an amazing thing. Can you imagine, though, dri driving your car without a fuel gauge? Can you imagine driving your car without a fuel gauge and you're driving and all of a sudden it starts sputtering and then it stops and you're dead in the road? Now it's a real problem. Because now you've got to put in massive work to go and get, get that refueled. Well, the red light in the car is your indicator that you need to go refuel your car. We don't have an indicator in our lives that tells us when we need to refuel our vision. Okay. And that has been a massive key for me. And a couple things to write down is about every three years, you need to refuel your vision about every three years. Okay. It's almost, almost like clockwork. So that's what we do now. I will refresh my vision every year. I'll look at it. Is this still relevant? Then every three years, we completely rewrite the new one and we map it to my five-year personal vision story. Where do I want to be in my life in five years? Where do I want to be in 10? Where do I want to be in 20? So we need to refuel our vision every three years. Now, what happens for, for most people is if you don't recognize when you're starting to run out of fuel on your vision, you, you, you don't recognize those indicators. Those indicators for me are too many weeks in a row, I start to say, man, I don't really enjoy my work right now, right? Too many weeks in a row, I don't wanna do the work that I had created. Too many weeks in a row, I kind of get, you know, I'm wandering and I'm, I'm not really focused. Too many weeks or months in a row, I just am kind of done. I'm starting to think about you know, other opportunities and get distracted. If I start to do that and I my energy starts to go down and I'm in, in energy drain versus energy give too many weeks in a row, that's my red light indicator on the dashboard. Oh my gosh, Trevor, go back to your vision. And if I don't have a clear vision, then I refuel that vision. I either refuel myself by reading my vision again and getting excited about it again, or I rewrite that vision to make it more exciting. Okay, this exact thing happened after I almost crashed that car. Um, in 2016, that same year, as I was trying to go, okay, how the heck um, am I going to build this business so it's not on my back and we can truly make an impact? I went back and I hired a coach, and that coach was worth this for about two years, and he came back recently again for another two years as as I needed to train my team on how to do some of these things. And he helped me write my, write my first what I call vivid vision on the, on the business side of things. This is part of the first page of a 16 page document that on, honestly took us from 1 million to 10 million. Uh, this document, the whole 16 pages, every word of it, we gave to our Epic Plan members that they have access to. They can read my entire vision that took me from 2016 to the end of 2021. It took us from 1 million to 10 million. And uh, just knowing and seeing that, I think is gonna be really powerful for our Epic Plan members. But we created that first real company vision in 2016. Um, and we hit that five-year vision of 10 million a year in recurring revenue exactly to the month when we had planned it, to the month. Five years prior, I said, this is when I think we may hit this. And that was a massive goal. I didn't think we'd actually honestly ever hit it, okay? But to the month is when we hit it. Why is, why is it that to the month, five years later is when we actually hit that? Because that's when we wrote it down, guys. That's when we wrote it down. We created the clarity of the vision. And same thing at that time period, we hit the next pain line. The problem was guys, I was behind. I got busy again. I was behind on refreshing our vision and we hit some massive pain lines. And the, uh, the common mistakes that we have to make is we seek new, uh, you know, can we, uh, we, we need new, we seek new, then we look to start new things. We try to innovate outside of our primary business that got us where we are. The most common for real estate investors is I'm going to start coaching now, right? I'm going to start coaching or whatever it is, but we, we seek new. And I started to do that uh, at the end of that five-year vision because I didn't refresh it. I didn't know that several years back or I knew it, but I ignored it. Um, and seeking new brings you away from the business that got you there. We continually optimize for dollar metrics, but rarely optimize for energy, freedom, or impact, which causes burnout. I knew these principles, but 
I was starting to fall into some of those same traps because I didn't have the clarity of vision. I was starting to have my time and energy uh, be depleted again. You know, we, we think I'm a starter. I don't like to run things, which may be true. And, and, and um, you think the best way out of this job is that you don't like anymore is by creating a new one versus reinventing our current business and reinvigorating our current job. Or we think too short term to keep the business operating the day to day, but we rarely pull up to think long term and we aren't clear in our vision. So we run out of that runway or we run out of fuel. All right, guys. Um, and it kind of looks like this. So I, I want to challenge you all on this call. I've got one last concept and we'll dive into any questions. I want to, and I'm going to sum it up. I'm going to challenge you guys on this call that I need you to shift your mindset to think in longer time horizons. Shift your mindset to think in longer time horizons. When you're in an energy draining phase or cycle of your life, it's likely because you're focused on the center circle, which are tactics. It's you're focused on this week, this month, pretty much. What is the, the latest emergency? What's the latest thing that's popping up this week, this month? Okay. Uh, I, I would challenge you to start to lengthen it out to, to think about strategy a little bit more. Strategy is like a couple quarters out or more. It's, it's a year out, right? It's, it's about the year, okay? Uh, and even further, spend some time to think about your mission, vision, values, which is like, let's say one to three, three plus years out. As soon as I started to actually schedule time on my calendar for strategic thinking, for just literally wandering and thinking, uh, once a week, usually I've got a massage that happens in our office gym over here. Uh, Coach Paul comes in there with the, with the little uh, machine, and he turns on the meditation music for 25 minutes and I get the massage. Now, I don't get the massage because I just love massages. And I don't get them because I've got pain in my back. I honestly get them because it's one of the best ways for me to have uninterrupted time and my brain just goes. It goes when I'm getting massage with meditation music. That's where I start to think about strategy. That's where I think about one to three years out. And I challenge you to find those times in your own life and schedule that gets you to that spot. Maybe it's walking by the river. Maybe it's jogging or biking. Maybe it's walking around time. Maybe it's a massage. Maybe it's just sitting and meditating. But find some time on your own calendar to start to think longer out and really think about where do I want to go? Where do I want this business to go? And it's going to help you to really make some better decisions. Okay, so two things, guys, that I do to get more rooted and back into my energy is I write a personal vision story. And my personal vision story, I've got it right over here. Uh, yeah, it's right over here, uh, right here. My personal vision story, y'all, is inside of this orange notebook, okay? And I remember New Year's Eve, I was sitting there at 10 o'clock p.m. in San Diego reading my personal vision story that I'd written last year. And what I do every year is I read it um, and then I rewrite it, I refresh it. And the way that I start my personal vision story is this, and this is why this is so powerful. And if you guys walk away with nothing else on this call other than this, uh, this is the thing that's going to be kickstarting every other part of that entrepreneur freedom formula framework I showed before. Okay. I want you to sit there in a, in a quiet spot, take out a piece of paper, take out a pen and literally write down the ideal average day of what you want your life to look like in 20 years. Start at the 20 year mark. Okay. Why at the 20 year mark? Because at the 20 year mark, y'all, when, when a lot of us think about the person we want to become or we think about goals, we usually think just a few years out or even a year out, right? But when, when, when we only think one, two, three, four years out, our, our, our past and our limiting beliefs are actually what influences that, that plan. So all of your limiting beliefs, all of your past, the one, two, three years, all the challenges, they're going to be the major influencer of that vision in one, two, three years. We need to go further out so it completely breaks our mental model and com completely breaks the limiting beliefs around what our life could be like. 20 years is a lot longer way, right? And so I'll sit there and I'll write down on my personal vision story, literally the ideal average day in as much detail as possible from the second you wake up to the second you go to bed, okay? And it would literally be, I wake up, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, so 20 years out, right? It's 2043. I'm 60 years old. And then I literally say, I open my eyes and here's what happened in my day. I open my eyes at six, at 6.15 in the morning and then blah, and I just start to go. Okay, talk about every detail. What does the room look like? What does it smell like? Uh, who is there in the room with you? Uh, what are the first conversations you have during the day? When you walk out into the kitchen, what type of breakfast do you have? Who's eating there with you? Okay, if you have kids right now like I do, uh, they're eight, 
10 and 12, I even write my kids in there. I say, McKinley, who's 12 now, she's 32 years old. Here's where she's likely at. I, I even like cast that vision in there. Okay. And, and, and I, I spell that out with all my kids in here. And then I say, okay, what, when do I go to work? What time do I go to work? Where do I go to work? Am I walking to work? Am I driving to work? What am I driving? Okay. When I get to work, what does it look like? Who's there? What type of people work for me? How many people work there? Okay. When I walk in, what, what does my office look like? Um, what type of work do I do that day that just fuels my energy? That like, dude, if this is my this, if this is my ideal work day, that's it. Like, write down what you want, not what you think you can achieve. Write down what you want. Dream a little bit here, y'all. Okay. So you write that down, and then do you have lunch? Do you work out? Who do you work out with? How do you do that? You go all the way to the end of the day. When do you stop working? Okay. When do you go home? Who's at home? What's for dinner? How do you want? How do you end up the day? all the way until the moment of closing your eyes. I know that sounds crazy, but when I started to do that over a decade ago, once again, my life changed because clarity of vision drives every decision. Clarity of vision drives every decision. Once I did the 20 year, then I said, okay, now I'm gonna walk it back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing 10 years out, okay? It's 2032, I'm 50 years old. Here's my ideal average day. And you write it out, okay? You write it out just like you're living it. And then I walk it back one more time, uh, five years out. Now, this is where it's key, y'all. This is where it's key because the 20-year breaks your limiting beliefs. The five-year brings you closer. Now you can build your business plan based off that. The five-year, I do the same thing. It's five years out. I'm 45 years old. It's you know, it's 2027. Here's my ideal average day. And what you write is you say, well, if if my if I'm going to be living this life in 10 years, and and that life in 10 years is going to fuel my life in 20 years, what must my ideal average day look like in five years to live that 10-year life? Okay. And then you start to then really get more specific about your work. You say, if I'm going to live that life in 10 years, what must my work and my business look like in five? Write that in detail. Then you can walk back and build your business vision. Then you can say, okay, here's the life I want to live in 2010 five. Let me now build a three-year business vision that moves me toward that five-year personal plan. That's how we build lives with intention, guys. Grab this book, Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold. He can walk you through how to build the, bi the business Vivid Vision. Uh, we have an entire massive training on how to do this with our templates. But it ends up looking like this. Okay, th this is, these are some examples. Uh, and I talked with Eric, uh, Eric Martin, one of our Epic Plan members just recently. And he took this from Carrot Camp. And he's like, dude, I took the, the template you gave me from Carrot Camp. And they've got their one page three-year and one-year strategic plans up there, they have a business vision. I like having the, the, the vivid vision with pictures like up in the upper left, a little slide deck with pictures and, and cool things to kind of bring the emotion out. Or you can make it simple. You can do a vision board for the business. Cut out stuff and put it on a board, whatever works for you, right? But I want you to paint an exciting picture about that business, and that business should directly fuel the life you want to live, not the other way around. Okay, your life should not fuel the business. The business should fuel the life. All right, guys. So um, we're going to be able to give you guys some resources. These resources here, uh, this one here, I think we actually have this. I could link up here to you guys. Pop in the comments box if you want a link to this template. It's just a Google slide deck template where you can grab it and you can start to build out your one page strategic plan or your one page business vision. Uh, I'll link it up if uh, we get enough people to pop it in here. But what, what I want you guys to, to really do next is after we've done that, this is my last concept, kind of a bonus concept, and we'll open up for any Q&A. You've already got it, Scott. I love it. Um, is this. Is as you saw during this entire workshop today, when things started to change for me is when I changed my mentor circle. It's when I really changed the way I thought about how I surround people around me, how, do I, how, how I gather new and, 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 and deeper information. And this actually comes from a friend of mine, Seth Buick, the friend and mentor. He, he spoke at the last Carrot Camp event. And he, he says you should, everyone should have a mentor. Everyone should have a peer group. And everyone should have a mentee. Everyone should have a mentor. Everyone should have a peer group. And everyone should have a mentee. Now, what are those? And how, how can you look at, at placing these effectively in your life to really drive that growth and drive the joy in your life that you deserve, right? A mentor is ideally someone who's two to four steps ahead of you. So when you look at those pain lines or you look at those business levels, if you're at 300,000 a year, then you'd wanna have a mentor who's probably at a million to three million a year, 
or, or more, somewhere between a million to three million to five. You don't want someone who's doing 40 million a year because they're so far removed from the phase of the business you're in. And also you don't want a mentor who's never done that thing, never built the business to the phase you want to go. Okay. So whatever it is, whether it's physical fitness or faith or health or business, find a mentor who's someone who's two to four steps ahead of you. They've lived it. They've gone through it. They, and they love you. That's a key that, that Seth says is your mentors have to be aligned in values. Your values have to match and they need to love you. Now, not love like mushy mush love. They need to love you in a way to where they're going to call you on your stuff. They're going to call you and they care enough about you that if they, if they see you going off a cliff or they see you go in the right direction, they're going to call you on it. And that's what we need our mentors to be. And sometimes you have to pay for that, right? I know when, when I hired my first coach in 2016, I paid for it. When I hired, uh, when I joined Russell Brunson's mastermind, he became a mentor of mine, as did others I met in there. Um, and I had to pay for it. When I joined Dan Martell's coaching program and joined his group that has am other amazing entrepreneurs in it. I pay for it gladly uh, because I get multiples in value back just from every interaction I have. It's amazing. Okay, now, guys, we have a peer group. So the peer group uh, is people who are at a similar level, right? Uh, you each feed into each other and bring different skill sets to the table. These are people that you grow and do life with for decades, ideally, okay? So what might a peer group look like? I'll give you guys a few examples. The, the way that I like to use peer groups is I put this in IG a little while ago. I like to use peer groups um, as this model, blank plus fellowship. So I fit in any of my hobbies in it plus fellowship. Hobbies are things I'm passionate about. Fitness and fellowship, faith and fellowship, okay? Um, fun and fellowship, like whatever it is that I'm wanting to do. And so fitness and fellowship, Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the gym. This started about five years ago and it's really ramped up this last year with an amazing group of guys. But five years ago, I created a gym in our office because I needed to have my gym here so my coach could be here because I was not disciplined enough to go to the gym, okay? And I, and I hit one of those pain lines and I knew I needed more energy in my life uh, so I could run the business. And I, could, I could be the best husband and father I could possibly be. I needed to work out. I needed to move every day. That was one of my, one of my discipline ceilings that I hit. Once I did that, I cracked through because I had more energy. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, an amazing group of four of the dudes come in here and we get to talk. We're all at similar levels of business, life. We're all faith-driven, uh, but just amazing guys who have similar hobbies, similar values. That's been crazy, crazy fruitful. Wednesday morning Bible study this morning, uh, three other amazing guys. We meet weekly, um, fellowship and plus faith. And there's other things you can do where you can start to build fellowship around you in those important areas. But on the business side, that's a mastermind. That's like the group that I started that I talked about at the start of this webinar, uh, the mastermind I created just with people that I gathered. I didn't have to pay for that. I just gathered those people. Hey, you're, I like you. We, we align in values. We have similar ambitions. You're really good at these things I'm not good at, and I'm good at these things you're not good at. Why don't we just get together once a month and or once a year, whatever that cadence is, and just connect, right? So I've got that mastermind group. We meet once a year. We go to a new location somewhere around the world. Our wives go now. And it's such an amazing thing. We do life together. Okay. So how do you build those peer groups? I pay for my mastermind peer group on the professional side of things and get professional and personal development with my coach, uh, Dan Martell. I invest about 60000 a year into that. And it's worth 10 times more than that. Okay. I've got my other peer groups that I run. And then I've got the, the, the hobby and passion peer groups, the blank plus fellowship. Then on the mentee side of it, uh, I, I believe, too, that everyone should be mentoring somebody, okay? So you, you should be mentee, mentoring someone two to four steps behind you who you want to feed into. It could be formally or informally. They can be paying you or not. And that's one of the things that I'm most passionate about with the Epic program is I get to mentor dozens and dozens and dozens of amazing entrepreneurs, and I get tons of energy out of that. But what I, I heard a quote uh, not too long ago from Ed Milet because uh, one of the big mental blocks that comes up for people. They go, oh my gosh, dude, I'm still trying to start my company. I'm struggling. How, who the heck am I going to mentor, right? Who the heck am I going to mentor? Well, you are the perfect mentor for who you used to, be, for who you used to be. Okay. You are the perfect mentor for the person that you used to be. If you're a person who had trouble with alcohol and drugs in the past, and now you're not, but man, you're struggling on the business side. You're at the bottom of the totem pole on the business side. And you're wondering who the heck do I can I mentor and what value do I have? You have so much value 
for the person over here who's two to four steps behind you on their battle with drugs and alcohol. Why don't you go mentor them? You can be an amazing life-changing mentor for that person. Okay, let's say you absolutely love fly fishing and you've been fly fishing forever, but you're struggling on the business side of it. And there's someone over here who wants to learn how to fly fish and they're great at business. Why don't you guys pair up and you mentor them on the fly fishing side of them, side of things and they mentor you on the business side of things, right? It's huge, guys. Once we start to figure out our mentor circle, uh, once again, things change. Life changes in a big way. And so, Scott, um, dude, dude, yeah, dude, we, we all do. I, I think everybody should be in a mastermind, uh, whether you create one yourself or whether you pay to be in it, what, whatever, whatever works for people. But I think we, we should not be isolated away as entrepreneurs. When we get isolated, that's when we have challenges. So in recap, guys, uh, we need to focus on buying back your time while the energy and health is still there. Uh, number two, innovate within your business and reinvent your job versus uh, continue to go on that three-year turn and burn cycle, getting distracted every three years whenever things get hard again. You push through the pain by growing individually and surrounding yourself with people who've gone through that. Think on bigger time horizons and get clarity of your vision. Surround yourself with mentors, peers, and mentees to really add momentum and purpose. And um, it kind of goes back to the entrepreneur freedom formula. The model you can use as you grow your business is you go, cool, how, do I have a clear personal vision? Check. Do I have a clear business vision? Check. Do I have a clear strategy that's documented on how I'm going to reach my goals, goals and strategy? If you do, check. Uh, have I baked in good marketing, evergreen marketing and added leverage to my business? Check. Okay, now business is going good. Man, uh, do I have a process in my schedule to, to, to do the energy audit and then to create the right documentation and playbooks and to delegate effectively? If you do, check. You can start to build it. And then you start to move up here in the impact side of things. This circle, guys, every three years, you pretty much renew in that circle. About every three years, you go through this and you grow through that next business level. And then you hit a spot where you run out of fuel in your vision and you need to refresh the vision again. Okay, refresh your personal vision. Refresh the business visions. Okay, and then create the business strategy for that next year that's going to fuel that. And once you have that business strategy, do the marketing that's going to help you execute that strategy. Once you've done those things, energy audit and continually prune to be able to buy back your time and delegate the things that don't give you energy and keep the things that do. Okay. As that team has built, you've, you've got consistent profits, you've bought back your time and energy, and now you can really focus on the impact you want to make in the world. All right, guys. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap it at that, but I do have a call to action. Okay. I do have a call to action that we have started this new program called Epic, and um, it does have a barrier of entry. It, it's uh, number one, we want to make sure that we're bringing in people who are serious, who already have a business. So uh, there is an income threshold. You got to be doing at least 100000 a year to be even considered uh, to even set up a discovery call, 100000 a year in your real estate business. Um, now, if you, don't, if, you, if you aren't at that level yet, no big deal, guys. Everyone starts below 100000 a year. Uh, tap into our podcast, the Carrot Cast. Tap, tap into our other resources that are free and learn how to get those deals done. Go to our, our, our marketplace and uh, go get a coach on the wholesaling side. Get that business going from a tactical perspective and get to 100K. That's when we can help you the best is once you have a business going, you've closed some deals. Okay, But what we've really dove into is kind of building my dream program. Uh, it's personally led by me with my team. Uh, access to me, my my friends, my mentors, coaches, uh, access to my internal playbook. So literally today, I shared up a playbook uh, and, and a resource that's a new resource that no one has had except for my Epic Plan members. And um, we went through something I call the CEO Priority Waterfall today. And it was full of our you know, high-level Epic Plan members showing them how to, do, how to plan out their week as a CEO, gave them the template and showed them how to work with their executive assistant to make it easier on them. So you have access to all my internal playbooks, business systems, personal philosophies. I won't hold anything back in it, y'all. Okay. Um, multiple impact calls for a month. We call these impact calls. Uh, I do a live session monthly. And uh, I'm just going to read off some of the sessions I've done recently. And they're very detailed. Every one of them have a framework and a model you can take and execute in your business. And then a worksheet or the actual resource. So uh, we did the company scorecard system a couple of weeks back. And in there, you literally get our scorecard that you can use at different levels of your revenue and business for wholesaling and flipping for being an agent, whatever it is. And you just put it into the, into the spreadsheet 
and you have an amazing scorecard you can inject in your business tomorrow. Or let's say you need to put together one year strategic plan. If you're a $300,000 a year business, it's going to be simpler than a $7 million business. So we have templates for both the simple and the more complex version. Um, and we have an entire impact session walking through step by step exactly how to make a strategic plan and so much more y'all. Uh, we've done amazing sessions this last two months and uh, we're not stopping. I want, I want to help you guys build that business freedom and impact. Uh, we have momentum groups that we're starting here soon. So we're pairing people up into groups of about eight to 12 and those groups are going to be similar phase businesses also matching people up based on their needs and desires. If you want to, there's a couple of people who want to grow multifamily while well, I'm putting them in a group where these other two people have started to scale multifamily and you get together monthly and you bring in your, what, what I call the entrepreneur scorecard. It's your primary goals for the quarter with your three main projects and you get to come on a red, yellow, green those. Okay. It's red, yellow, green. How are you doing on those things? We're going to have good, healthy accountability, good coaching and help you really um, have, have, have the, the accountability that you need with the peer group that you want uh, to be able to scale up. Okay. Amazing annual in-person event in Roseburg, uh, the community part of it. Guys, this group, even though it's, it's several dozen right now, it's a pretty powerful group. It's an amazing group. And you're going to have a dedicated success coach as well. Uh, one of our team members to have reach out to at any point. So guys go to carrot.com forward slash Epic carrot.com forward slash Epic. If you are interested in uh, setting up a discovery call and we'll hop on with you, learn about your business and we'll let you know what the Epic program is. And we'll, we'll let you know if, if it seems like it's right for you. Uh, and we're only going to tell you if, if we feel that we can truly help you change and grow your business the way that you want while you're buying back that time to create that business freedom and impact. And just pop over here. You can click schedule your discovery call. Uh, fill out the basic information here. Uh, it'll ask you if you have an existing business. That is a requirement. It, this isn't this this program isn't built to help you start a company. This one's helped to uh, built to help people who already have a company and consistent enough revenue to help you grow it in the right way. Uh, tell us when you launched the business, what your revenue is this past twelve months, how you heard about it. Click this. It's going to send you to a schedule page, and uh, we don't hard sell. It's just something we don't do here at Carrot. We'll, we'll learn about you. We'll give you some diagnosis and some prescription of what to do to go uh, work and solve through that next challenge. We'll tell you about the Epic program, if it's a fit, and then it's your decision to join or not. Um, we are keeping it exclusive, so the quality can be amazingly high. And this is my number one focus, y'all. It's where my passion is. So if anyone wants to up-level in your business, if you want to buy back that time, unlock growth to the next level, if you keep on hitting that, that ceiling, that pain line, and you want to have that peer group, you want to have a mentor uh, in, in, in myself and others in the group, and you want to accelerate the process of not having to figure out how to do all these things yourself, <clears throat> you want our resource, our template, our coaching, you go execute and deploy it's in the program, okay? There's a couple of things we're gonna be rolling out very soon. So some of our businesses, a lot of the businesses have employees in them and they don't have a kind of a, a main dashboard for their, uh, for their company yet to house their policies and to house their company goals and projects. Well, we're rolling out a brand new uh, template in a software called Notion that you can use for free that is literally our Epic Plan members complete dashboard for your company. <clears throat> the one spot, where you can store everything and I'm loving it. And uh, it's gonna be a massive, massive value for Epic Plan members. But guys, uh, let me know if there's any questions on here, uh, but go to care.com forward slash Epic, care.com forward slash Epic. Would love to hop on a discovery call with y'all and uh, really help you build a better business, build a business of freedom and impact. Uh, Scott, yeah, take a screenshot of this right here and that should give it to you. Uh, what we do in the Epic program is we go way deeper. So each one of these nodes actually has what we call an impact call. It's a training session on it, a masterclass basically, with the worksheets you can bring into your business with the executable template. So the personal vivid vision, the business vision, they have a template that you literally just go take and use. The company strategy part, we have a template that you go take and build your company strategy. We have a template to go build your marketing strategy and marketing model. Okay, down here. Energy Audit, we gave you that template today. Playbooks, we have complete playbook templates for every part of a real estate business. Acquisition, disposition, those are all being built out and so on. So guys, it's, it's gonna be pretty, pretty darn fun. Um, let's see, Scott says, when you say that your values have to match with a mentor, can you tell me more about that? Uh, dude, good question. So 
For me on the value match side of things, what, what I mean, let me sit down really, really quick. What I mean by the values have to match is, um, let me look at my calendar really quick to make sure I'm clear on my time. Cool, I'm good. What, what I mean when your values have to match is if there's things that you, um, that you hold dear in life that are important to you, uh, faith is one of them. Um, just it, it, even beyond faith, it could be uh, just the way you look at the world. Your I, I have a value in positivity and optimism, right? So one one of our company core values is be a beacon of positivity and possibility. I cannot have a mentor who's negative all the time. Okay, I cannot. No, I'm good, dude. I cannot have a mentor who's negative all the time. That will not work. So uh, that person must have a be a be beacon of positivity and possibility. I like to have, work with people who like to have fun. Um, I want to have, I want to work with someone who truly cares about crafting a freaking amazing experience. Um, and I want, I want to, I want to work with someone who is, is human. They're not just a, a robot just regurgitating stuff to you. They, they care about you. They want to work with you. They, they want to serve you. They want to grow with you. Right. Um, for me, I know, uh, I, I, I can't have a mentor who, as an example, is an atheist. If I, if I'm a believer, right. That just won't work. Cause when, when you really get down to, um, when you really get down to key, important, critical decisions, like among the most important ones, you have to make sure that your mentor aligns with you values wise. So they give you good advice, right? So that, that's, that's what I meant on that side of it. Yeah. Let's see. Scott says, I adapted that value. And <laughs> I love it, dude. The B beacon of positive possibility. I like it. Yeah, dude. Um, I'll, I'll give you one one last example on the mentor side of things. So Seth Ueckley, he's in my offices. He's uh, two offices away here in my building. And uh, he's been in this office space for probably six, seven years. We're great friends. We golf together. Um, I was at his kid's graduation this last weekend. Uh, we go to church together. We challenge each other. I call him out on his stuff. When he's going astray, he calls me out on, on my stuff. Um, I, I, I think we are both mentors of each other. We, that one's kind of a little bit of a blurred line where we are, are, we are also part of a peer group together. But what I do with Seth is every Wednesday at 4 PM, uh, he and I get together and we just talk, we talk for an hour and, uh, we, we get to connect and grow together. And so that's something that we do. We don't pay each other for it, but I have paid him in the past uh, for consulting on some of the business stuff. But um, yeah, guys, mentors are where the fruit is. And if, 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 we, if we go this alone, I can tell you, entrepreneurship is one of the most lonely things that they're, one of the most lonely endeavors that there can be out there. Because as entrepreneurs, we oftentimes are surrounded by friends or family who are not entrepreneurs, right? They don't understand our ambitions. They don't understand what we're going through. Um, I remember... On my 40th birthday a year ago, I was up at the lake cabin and my family was there. My, my, my uh, wife's parents were there. And just the way I'm wired is I want to challenge myself. Like I will purposely put myself through pain, right? I will purposely put myself through pain uh, to grow. And, and that's just the mindset that I, that I have. Like, dude, it's not hard enough. I want to make this hard intentionally because it, I know if I intentionally create hard circumstances for me to grow through in the right areas, the areas that I want to do. Um, then every other hard thing that I don't ask for that's thrown at me in life is easier. Okay. So I woke up on my 40th birthday and I'm like, dude, I haven't really, been, I hadn't really been working out as much that last few weeks. I wanted to, and I go, dude, I just turned 40. I need to start my 40th with something hard that like makes me feel accomplished. And I, and I woke up, talked to my wife, said, babe, I'm going to do a run around the lake. And I'm not a big distance runner, you know, traditionally. And I hadn't, I hadn't ran in like legit ran probably more than a few miles in a year. Um, before that I had been working out, but not distant stuff. And it ended up being a 10 mile run and leading up to it. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't really want to do it. My body wasn't feeling it. My brain wasn't feeling it, but though that's the time when we need to do the thing. Cause only about 30% of the time, you're actually going to want to do the thing, the hard thing that you know you need to do. That means 70% of the time we don't want to do the thing, but it's that 70% is where the growth is. That's where also where most people give up. Most people give up because they only do the 30% of the things that they want to do and they don't go do go to the gym when they don't feel like it. They don't go do this hard thing when, when they don't feel like it. And that's where 
the big separators. If people are to ask me like, what is the big separator between those who succeed and those who don't? It's that's one of the biggest ones, if not the biggest, it's those who don't do it, do the thing when they want to do it and when it's convenient and comfortable for them and they quit it when they don't. And those who have success, they show up during that 70% of the time when they don't want to do it because they know that when they do, it's going to build them internally. It's going to make them stronger and it's going to help build momentum. So I got up, ran those miles. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, is, is my wife's mom. She goes, why are you doing it if you don't want to do it? Uh, why don't you just not do it? Because it just seems like if you don't want to do it and, and like your body's hurting, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do it. I said, that's exactly why I, I, I need to do it because I don't want to do it. And I know it's going to make me stronger at the end of it. And so I did. And I felt amazing from it. I love it. Yeah. Um, 75 hard. I did 75 hard two years ago, Scott. Finished it up again three weeks ago, the week before Carrot Camp uh, again. So I did it for the second time. It was amazing. I talked about it less on my podcast this time just because – I'd done it um, and I did talk about it, but I talked about it less and I kind of made it more of an internal challenge. My wife did it too with me and that was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is kind of my, my, my last thing that I'll say. You did say something here a little bit ago, Scott. You said, it's honestly really hard to find people who get my mindset. Dude, it is. Uh, and and I'll, I'll give you what worked for me once again. Um, number one, I had to work my butt off to create those uh those those people around me locally okay so locally i created the entrepreneur group locally there wasn't one and i created it and it was oftentimes me with one other person that i didn't know who the heck was going to show up the entrepreneur group that month but i told people i'm going to be here at this time this month uh, whoever is interested in entrepreneurship come and whoever comes comes i pushed that for a decade and it took three years of me showing up every single month without fail and having people tell other people about the group, it took three years to have it be consistent enough to get more than 30 people each time. Okay, there were times when I didn't want to show up to my own group. Probably 70% of the time I didn't want to show up to my own group because I didn't, I, I would, I would, I was gonna be embarrassed if I showed up and it was just me and one new person who was coming to this entrepreneurship group. And I'm like, hey, awesome, you came to the group. It's just us. I swear other people come. All right, I swear other people come. Um, so I kept showing up though. And because I kept showing up momentum built and that group built to be, uh, between 60 and 80 people started to come every single month. And that's where I got, I built some of my greatest friendships. You, you attract the people you want to find by going out there, uh, and, and, and finding them and creating that opportunity. If it's not there, you create it. Right. Um, or you buy into it. Right. So, uh, when, when I bought in my first mastermind in 2012, I wanted to be with a mentor. His name is Greg Clement. And Greg Clement lived the life I wanted. And that's pretty much the life that I have today. And I, I lived, the, he lived the life that, that, that I want. I'm like, dude, I don't know how he did it, but somewhere between where I am and where he is, it's all mysteries to me. I have no clue how he got there. It seems impossible. But if I can get my, myself around him, I think I can pick up cues that will get me there. And I did. Uh, I paid 20 grand for that year to be in that mastermind with him and being with him enough and the other people in the group, same thing. It changed my trajectory. From Greg, I learned about a thing called Strategic Coach. When Greg went through a program called Strategic Coach, that's where he got his original coach and mentor. And so I signed up for Strategic Coach because it was so valuable for him. That was another $7,000 that next year. I flew to Chicago four times with two other buddies who also joined it. Uh, then I learned different ways of thinking about things, different mental models. I didn't get a mentor or a coach per se, but I got models. I got different ways to think about the world and different ways to uh, uh, structure my time and my business. I left that, that after a year, and then I realized as my team is growing, I needed a leadership coach, so I hired a leadership coach for $2,000 a month. Um, and he would show up in my office once a week. On every Tuesday at 4.30, he'd show up in my office. We would just talk, and he would help me coach through that. He helped me make that original vision. And after he helped me through those challenges, his work was done. Then I hired Dan Martell, my coach, $5,000 a month for going on five years now you add those numbers up and you go dude trevor so you you invest like half a million dollars in coaches over the last decade yeah and that half million dollar investment has made me tens of millions of dollars and so i will make that investment all day long uh to pay to get around the right people if i have to so um it's definitely a limiting belief scott where, where you mentioned it's hard to find people who get your mindset they're all around you Okay. Epic programs here. There's masterminds. There's people. You just have to make the decisions that get, that get you around them. 
okay? Or you go create the group yourself. All right, man. Awesome. Uh, Adam Mitchell told me I need to, uh, I need to about a year ago. Let's see. Uh, said that's literally been on my mind for, for the last month. The real estate investor meetup here isn't cutting the mustard. Adam Mitchell told me I need uh, to about a, a year and a half ago. Dude, yeah, make it. If you can't find it, make it. If you can't make it, buy into, buy into the best one. All righty. Cool, cool. Start the group, dude. Get it, man. Awesome, y'all. I got to bounce. Um, care.com forward slash epic, www.care.com forward slash epic. Uh, guys, if you're looking for not just the group, not just the mentor, but you're looking for the mental models, you're looking for the executable processes and playbooks, you're looking to um, you're looking to buy back your time, but you're looking to do it in a way where it won't take you 10 years like it did for me to learn this stuff. Uh, there was one session I taught today uh, in this one mindset shift and process that took me literally six years to learn and go through painful learning process with my executive assistant. And now that I know it, I taught it to everyone on that call today on how to do this one tweak of how they're working with their assistant. And the guys who have assistants on there, like, dude, that's gonna, that alone is worth the whole year of Epic, that one switch right there. And so get around the right rooms. You guys will accelerate your process along the way there and not have to make the same mistakes that I made. So appreciate you guys. Care.com forward slash Epic. Set up a discovery call. Be pumped to hop on with you. Either be myself or Pete on my team. You guys have a great week. Build a business with intention. Build a business for freedom and impact. And uh, either way, we can be a part of it. Go listen to our podcast. I talk a lot of, about a lot of these topics on my podcast, The Carrot Cast. And if we're fortunate enough to, to have our, our missions aligned and um, the program is right for you, I'm pumped to work with you in Epic as well. All right, guys. Talk soon. Have an amazing rest of the week. Talk soon. See ya.